What's up guys and welcome back to the Motor Gumpton YouTube channel with me Ish Barrientos. I have not forgot about you and I have not forgot about the build. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get this thing going today. Today's episode, we're gonna go ahead and touch base on the last thing that I did. We're gonna go ahead and trim the coupler, which is a little too long. We're also gonna be taking the two old fans off the old radiator and putting them on the new one. We're gonna go ahead and start plumbing the boost reference lines into the three bar map sensor, as well as hooking up to the Power Commander 5 because this thing needs to see what's happening with the supercharger and the air going in the engine. Now, um, I will say this, I apologize for the delay, but I needed to get my personal affairs in order. And let's get to it. All right, guys, so let me just say sorry for the delay and let me just explain where I was the last few weeks. Now, the last few weeks, I did take a trip to Florida with my girl, a little bit of a breather from life in Kansas. We went to Destin, Florida, which is an awesome, awesome place. But I also had to let my money for the build replenish itself. Now, because I lost my job about two uh, months ago, I was in the aerospace game and aerospace is really crazy right now. COVID-19 has not been nice to it. So do not feel sorry for me at all because I went ahead and ventured out with my cousin and my brother and we started our own business. Now, anybody who has started their own business knows that getting an LLC, get your licensing, your insurance and all that stuff is a big, big thing and it takes time and research. So now that I got my all my priorities straight and uh, you know in order, we can go ahead and continue with the build. So first on the agenda, we're gonna go ahead and take these two fans and throw them over here on the new one. So we're just gonna do a little bit of uh, camera magic and you know, just make them magically appear over here in three, two, one. All right, so we went ahead and got these two uh, fans over to the new radiator. Of course, we did use Loctite and we did torque the bolts to spec because you know what? We're gonna do things right. So we're gonna head over to the bike. So moving right along over here, we're gonna go ahead and address this stupid long coupler. We're gonna go ahead and make a trim cut. Um, a little out of time until we get the uh, hose where we want it. So it lines up with this bolt here or this hole. And uh, let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, we're gonna take a mediocre <laughs> measurement here just to see how much we should be uh, taking off of that uh, tube. Okay, so got that cut down now. Here is the inch and a quarter that I had to take off. I wish I could say that was a perfect cut, but I did have to take off another quarter inch to make this sit perfect. So we do have this on now where it should be. Um, just a little bit of movement and it'll be right where it needs to be mounting up with that um, radiator bracket. Uh, before I put the radiator on, we're gonna go ahead and start routing the traction fluid hoses onto the uh, supercharger as well as on the reservoir. So that way, once I get everything lined up, it can easily in one transition be mounted and not come off. All right, so we also got a new longer bolt for the drive pulley that goes to the crank. Um, that was a little bit of a pricey bolt to find something that was longer. Now, the issue was not finding a longer M10-125 pitch. It was finding an M10-125 pitch that was longer uh, at least a 90 millimeter so I can cut it down if needed, but the socket cap screw was the issue. So this is what a socket cap screw looks like. This uh, diameter will fit perfectly inside the drive pulley. Like I said, if I was trying to look for a hex for this thread and length um, would not be a problem, but finding that head type was the issue, so I had special order. So thanks to FMW Fasteners because they have quite a bit of selection on that stuff. Anyways, so we're gonna go ahead and torque down the pulley, but we're not gonna put Loctite just yet because if I have to remove it, I don't wanna use heat and potentially damage um, the oil seal on the, uh, the mounting bracket. The exhaust manifold on this bike is a Yoshimura and it is modified for the supercharger. And I did hint earlier in the build um, about what I'd be using because I can't use it once I go turbo. So why waste it? So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. And that being said, guys, once that exhaust manifold comes off, that is officially the beginning of this bike going turbo. Now, for some, that's not a big deal. For me and for the FZ1 community, that is an awesome deal. But 
So we're gonna go ahead and start taking that off and throwing it over there. guys so I have the exhaust header off now the thing about the exhaust header is I completely forgot about a fitment issue so what I did was to fit the Leo Vince exhaust on there the slip on exhaust was I made a inner sleeve to accommodate the difference in diameters so let me show you so first I guess I should show you that the two brothers exhaust that I was going to originally put on the uh, exhaust system is a bit different on diameter that's not gonna work okay so we have this beautiful pretty great condition exhaust more on that a little bit later what I did do what I did do for the Leo Vince was I have an inner sleeve right here that I created to accommodate the inner diameter and the outside diameter differences okay so it is a very very snug fit Okay, I don't want to push that on there all the way, but that is that. So that being said, what I might do is I go, I'm going to go ahead and put the um, Yoshimura header as well as the Leo Vince uh, slip-on exhaust and on the raffle build because I can't use that slip-on anyways. The reason why I was actually wanting to keep that was because they don't make those anymore. They don't make a lot of stuff anymore for the FG1s anyways, but that is a very, very hard item to find, and I really liked it. So, sorry for being stingy. Anyways, that is gonna go on the raffle build now. Now, the two brothers exhaust over there. What I think I'm going to do is I'm gonna do a giveaway. This will be a free giveaway. There will be no ticket price. There will be nothing uh, to do with money coming to me on this free giveaway, all right? And I will ship it to you guys. If you guys are overseas, all right, we'll talk about shipping. If it's in the, U in the United States, shipping is free. But if you're overseas, you guys will have to pay for the shipping because that can be um, kind of expensive and defeat the purpose of me even giving it away because it'll be double the cost. Anyways, when I can put that money into this bike. So, all right guys, let's continue. Let's get this exhaust system on this motorcycle so we can get the radiator mounted. Well, um, I got ahead of myself again. So I forgot that I needed to put on the traction fluid lines before I can mount anything. So we're back to it having come off so I can do this. So what I'm just gonna do is, is use some uh, other hose and mimic the sizes on my bike and then cut the sucker up and get on with it, I guess. I just, like I said, if you haven't had it apart in a long time, you forget things. And well, yeah, I just forgot that step. Not that I'm gonna do it wrong, just forgot that step. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use this to mimic the sizes or the links on the other one. And we're gonna go ahead and cut the sucker up. I'm gonna give it a little bit extra so I can trim it down. I went ahead and I did fix what I needed to do as far as the uh, traction fluid lines. So if you look here, I, here is your flow passageway. So you have from your reservoir down at the bottom, transfers to your filter from your filter you have your inlet right here filters through comes out the outlet and then back to the top now there is no cooler with this system particularly because this is kind of like a radiator itself and also it's not underneath a hood so it's not trapped heat this is actually getting wind the whole time because it's on the side of the bike now another thing is, is i won't be able to mount the reservoir right now because i was not supplied with uh, long enough bolts to actually clamp this down. So tomorrow in the morning, I will go run to the hardware store and get these. I do not need the reservoir to mount the rest of it. So this is going back on. I'm just gonna disconnect here, disconnect here, and 
put that back on once I do have that. So I'm gonna go ahead and slap this thing back on the bike. So before I put the supercharger on, I'm gonna go ahead and slap the exhaust on. Now, um, if you guys are like me, you always have a problem with these falling out while you're trying to put the header on. So you put them inside the uh, port and they'll just keep on dropping. Now what I do is I get a little bit, I don't have my red actual uh, high temp silicone sealer, but I'm gonna go ahead and use this uh, ultra black. I just put a little bit on, just like these little spots. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna go ahead and glue it to the, um, to the port so it doesn't fall out. And you can go ahead and put your exhaust uh, header on. Now I'm not using a lot guys, I'm literally just using just little bits of amount and this is going to squeeze out, it's going to seal perfectly, I've never had any issues but this actually allows you to go ahead and put the header in there without these falling out. I already have the other three in, I'm going to go ahead and put this last one and get the header in. Mm -hmm. So it's now starting to come back to me where TTS failed short of making this a perfect kit. Um, I remember now when putting on this bracket right here, these bottom two um, mounting points are no good. So they drilled in this mounting bracket here, a threaded hole and a threaded hole, obviously you can see here. The problem is, is that I don't have the belt tightened right now. So when I do put tension on it, you can see that you are no longer going to be able to use this one or this one, okay? So to hold that bracket in, you're gonna only have one, two, and three, like I do on mine. So on mine, I only have one, two, and three. Um, these two are actually just for show. They're actually ground down and just threaded in with some Loctite, as you can see. See, there's nothing, nothing there. So that's, I mean, how do they mess that up? You could have put those two holes higher, you could have fixed a program, but they're still producing these, which is not a big deal, but I mean, come on, big flaw there. So now that we're in a position where we can actually mount the radiator without there being anything obstructing it as far as uh, the right order of putting this thing together, uh, I'm gonna go snag it and see what we can do. Hopefully uh, it's a good fitment because you know, this was a uh, aftermarket radiator for this bike. Don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. This side looks good. That side needs a little help, but other than that, guys, it looks really, actually, like it fits there. So she's in there right now, nice and tight, but I did go ahead and uh, put a drill bit on that bottom um, that bottom mounting point. That way I have it all locked in and in line. So when I get that bolt, I just push it through and start tightening it in. With the drill bit going all the way through to keep everything in line, make things easier, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting these two, putting all the coolant lines together, rerouting the fan uh, wires back through to the wiring harness. All the passages will be connected. All right, we got all the radiator lines hooked up. All right, I even put the band clamps on the uh, silicone couplers on both sides as well as hooked up this over here. Well, okay, that was a little bit longer than I actually anticipated. And for editing purposes and making sure the video is not super lengthy, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day for right there. But we did get a lot done. Um, I am gonna go ahead and go get that last bolt to go ahead and hard mount that uh, radiator. And we did get a lot done. That's the thing about these kits, they're not plug and play. There's always something wrong. Either the wrong ha hardware, no hardware, misplacement of certain things, um, but we're gonna get it situated, all right guys? Also, I'm gonna go ahead and start mounting, or I'm gonna start wiring in the all the vac lines as well as the three bar map sensor. I do have the new injectors in one of those boxes up there. So I got four new injectors from 5.0 Motorsports. That way we have something that can flow the fuel that is needed on this. Also, so, um, we're not too far guys from actually getting this thing to start. We are very, very close. I mean, we just have to plug in the wiring, get the computer up there, uh, the new injectors in and the slip on exhaust, which the new option is going to be my old slip on, which is the Leo Vince. All right. Very, very nice piece. 
As for this one right here, guys, I will be doing a giveaway, okay? There's no ticket necessary, no purchase necessary, all right? I'll come up with some details and how you guys can enter a small, short video for that. So it is for a Gen 2, guys, all right? Gen 2 FZ1. So 2006, 2015, it will fit, all right? Um, it will be free. Like I said, I will pay for shipping as well. Um, if it's out of the United States, you will have to pay for shipping if you win, but it'll be very simple to enter, like, like the video, share the video and make sure you're a subscriber, something along those lines, guys. All right. Something very simple, but it is a very nice piece. Nothing is wrong with it. There is no damage. Realistically, there's this from the bands that go there that holds it in place. And I have all the other pieces. So without further ado, guys, I will catch you on the next one and it'll be very soon because I want this thing out of my garage and in one of your guys' garage. Take it easy, guys.